Hello there, welcome to part two in the Fly Me to the Moon uh, tutorial. This one is on the chords. Hopefully you've watched part one, you know the melody, I'm going to assume that you have and do. So let's go straight into the chords. When you're learning chords to jazz repertoire, it is very easy because they often follow the same chord structure. So instead of learning individual chords, you learn blocks of chords. And fortunately, Fly Me to the Moon, and at least, I don't know, 60, 70% of other jazz repertoire follows this same uh, logic. So learning this song is actually going to help you learn other songs as well. Just There just may be a slight variance in the structure of these blocks, but they're still basically the same. So the first block that you have to memorize in jazz, not just this song, but in almost every song of the jazz repertoire, is 6251. What does that mean? It means you choose a key, this is in the key of C, but of course mix it around into other keys and you play a chord I'll tell you what chord types in a moment and you play a chord on the sixth degree of the major scale the second the fifth and the first so that's the first block and that is what happens in this piece by listening to it you know how long each chord lasts lasts of course you can look at the lead sheet but that's kind of cheating it's best to do it by ear but if you have to then you can look at um, uh, jazzstudies.us you can find it in the list on the right hand side of that website just jazzstudies.us and it has all the lead sheets to all the jazz repertoire you'll ever need so this one is 6251 that's the first block to remember so just write that down because it's going to apply to everything that you ever play in jazz the second one that you're going to remember is moving up a fourth in this case it does go from C the one up to F that's the next thing to remember so let's just get into that part first with the melody it's a bar each so four beats or three if you want to play it as a waltz and it goes basically like this so you, uh, of course you know the chord types I have a video on chord types I'm just giving you the chords to this song on the assumption that you know how to play the chords so six is often a minor seven two is a minor seven five is a major third but with a flat major seven which is just called seven so G7 and then one is often major seven and that's what the chords are for this when you go up a fourth four is also a major seven. I have a video on modal theory and all the diatonic chords card link below go and study all that before you come to this piece if you would like so it go basically goes like this up a fourth and now we're going to the third thing that you need to remember which is called floating two five ones it is a two five one as it would be in any key but the one is just temporarily not the root, but a note from its major scale 99% of the time. Sometimes it might be onto the minor or the flat five or something like that. But 99% of the time it will be onto the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, well not so much the fifth, but the and the sixth. So often two, three, four, and six. So you'll often have to play a floating two five one onto the second, the third, the fourth, or the sixth. And in this case, it does a floating two five one onto the six so you play the sixths a in any key in this key, in, the, in this example key of c six is a it's two five one which is b minus seven because two is always minor five is e which is always with a normal seven a flat seven major third and then the temporary one which is the six which is a minor seven that happens for just two beats so there's three th three things to remember six two five one upper four floating two five one onto the six this is how you memorize jazz repertoire there's no other way this is simply it and by knowing this you can probably play a thousand other songs as well um i don't know blue moon is one six two five one all the way around and then it kind of goes two five one two five one then it does a floating two five one onto uh i think the four or even the flat seven i can't remember but it does a floating two five one that's my point and it's all the same numbers so just get used to doing that even without the melody but hear the melody maybe play the chords with both hands don't worry about inversions you can worry about all that fancy stuff later all the fancy chords are going to come in part three up a fourth to f um. now actually i'm going to say one extra thing which was in my mind earlier but i didn't want to confuse you i'll say it now because it's the correct chord when you do a two five one sometimes the two of that floating two five one or even when it's onto the master key onto the root it has a flat five in it now that's called a minor two five one just remember that the minor two five one is still a two five one but the two has a flat five in it that's all and it's called a minor two five one because the one is a minor not a major 
In other words, if I was to do a 2, 5, 1 onto A normally, it would be B minus 7, E7, A major 7, this is a major third. But in this case, it's going to a minor, so you have to do technical often, but it's not all the case, it's not all the time at all. It's like maybe, I don't know, between 40 and 60%. Um, it will be, you know, sometimes it will be a minor 2, 5, 1, meaning you play the flat 5 on the 2, or you uh, don't basically. And on this case, you do, because it's the melody note. Well, that's the minor, actually. Ignore that, what I said about the melody note, that's the F. But this one, you have to play the flat five. In fact, it does go over the mi over the flat, I thought it did. It goes over the flat five in the melody. So there you go. See, there, it doesn't go, it doesn't do that. It's, it's, it has, so this is technically a minor two, five, one. That's the five, of A, the sixth. And then when you land on the six, another thing to little to remember in jazz is that very often the six and the two can be major thirds rather than the minor third that they should be. And they can sometimes change in a piece. So sometimes you might just play a six. I'm playing, I'm playing a C chord here. And you go to the A, which is the chord six, but you'll play a major third, very, very common. Or sometimes what happens is when you go to a two, uh, so in the key of D, well, in the key of C, but playing a two, the D. Sometimes what can happen is you're playing the piece, da 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 da. You get to the to the two, and it's major third, and then it drops to the minor and the five. So that sometimes happens. So the six and the two can sometimes be major and then minor. And here it happens like that. It goes minor then major, and the melody dictates that because the melody goes, as you know, it suddenly goes from A minor. A major like that. So the chord changes minor to major. You'll just have to remember that as a rule, a rule of thumb. It just sticks out. That's it. And then you're back onto your 2 5 again. 2 5, just playing it inverted. And now what often happens is before a 6 2 5 1, you get a 3. And the 3 is going to be probably mo most of the time a minor 7 because 3 is a minor 7. And that's exactly what happens here. So you don't need to remember all of these chords, 6, 2, 5, 1, upper 4, the floating 2, 5, 1, then onto a major, and then a 2, 5, 3, 6, 2, 5, I mean that's, how many chords, I've lost count, 17 chords? Do you want to remember 17 chords, or just like 5 sections? 6, 2, 5, 1, upper 4, floating 2, 5, 1 onto the 6, uh, which has a little sort of star next to it to go up to a major third, but the, the melody dictates that, so you can't forget it. Two. 5 happens after that, so you maybe just put 2, 5 alone, and then 3, 6, 2, 5, 1. And then there's a turnaround at the end, which is again, 6, 2, 5, uh, and then you go and start on the 6 again, which is 2, 5, and it just sounds nice to start on the 6. So I'm going to play those chords, hopefully you've written them down in that way. I mean, I, I've got a pen here actually, so I might as well just show you how I would, l how I would write that down uh, myself. Um, do I have anything hard? I didn't plan to do this, but I'll just do it on here, actually. So if I were to learn this piece and I didn't know it, I would just go, oh, okay, fine, I'll learn. I'll just write the numbers down. So, okay, fine. So it's going 6, 2, 5, 1. And then let's just put a little up arrow, up a 4. I'm just doing it sort of like this, very, very simply, because this is how you learn it. 6, 2, 5, 1, up a 4. And then I put in brackets an F6, which means floating to the 6, 2, 5, 1. Floating to the sixth, two five one, so a two five one onto the sixth, and uh, that obviously has a uh, a major third afterwards. But I'm going to kind of ignore that because I know it's there because the melody dictates it. And then it's just your two five, and then it's just a three six, two five, and then you can go back to one. But either way, you can't. You, let's just put a one in brackets there. Either way, it just goes six two five one again. Well, it doesn't actually go to one, it goes to six. You go six, two, five, and then you start on the six again. So that's how you learn a jazz piece in, in these blocks. So you just got one, two, and you can even put these two together. That's another thing. You can block them together. So you can put like one and two together. That's kind of nice. The floating two, five, one, okay. And then the two, five, and the three, six, two, five kind of go together again. So in a way, it's kind of just three sections to learn this piece. And then the chord types come later you know that you know two three and six are minor and you know that one and four are major and uh you know that five is a dominant seven chord a flat seven so it's quite easy to you know learn these jazz songs with a tiny bit of brain power so 
Now you know. Now you're thinking floating two five ones of the six already. You're thinking ahead, and you know that's going to be here. For two beats, and then it goes up to the major third because the melody does, and then two five, three, six. As a major third, sounds nice here. Just remember that. Two, five, and now you can go one. Six, two, five, and start again. That's basically that's that is kind of what I wrote. Or you just don't go to the one; you go to the six directly. Listen, do the one that feels right to you. That is how you learn a jazz piece in those blocks. So, just show you again, just to say you're going back. If you want to pause the screen, uh, that's what I've done. So, you just remember six, two, five, one, upper fourth. Now you've got the melody down, and you've got the chords down, and you're going to play around with those with and without the melody. Uh, with both hands if you want to the chords you should be ready for part three where we're going to embellish the chords and embellish the right hand a bit so hopefully you'll enjoy that and give it a sprinkle of blues and improvisation and um hopefully you're going to find that quite useful and, uh, if i have to do a part four then uh, then i will do perhaps for example on intros and outros so there you go thank you very much for watching as always likes comments subscriptions always welcome have a look at my video my website was and perhaps patient and i'll see you in the next video all the best and bye for now